in rural Christian County. It's crazy what's going on here. There is a cloud of cancer hanging over the town of Palmer. Breast cancer. Cervical and breast. In 2013, I was diagnosed with lung cancer. Oral cancer. I had it metastasized in my brain and I had to have brain surgery. It's a nightmare. Every day you wake up and think, this is gonna be over. 229 people live here. Growing numbers are getting sick. Luann Stone started asking questions. When there started to be a lot of people diagnosed in just our block with cancer, four out of five houses. We have a lady right, right catty cornered from me, a gentleman right here <laughs> catty cornered from me. So many cases, Luann started keeping track of them. Esophageal, bladder, skin, oral, kidney, brain, bone, lymph node, colon. The lady down the street had breast cancer and my niece across the tracks had breast cancer. My uncle was diagnosed with lung cancer and he passed away. Just how many cases of cancer there have been in Palmer is in question. The most recent numbers from the state of Illinois were back in 2012. We asked for more recent numbers and they declined to give us that information. Luann has been tracking them. 29 cases in the past three years, over 80 in the past 15 to 20 years. Again, in a town of 229. Eight breast cancers in three years. It's, it's really scary. It, it's like it's starting to invade us around here, you know? My aunt lives two blocks down. She had cancer. What's causing the cancer? Is it in the air, the water, or in the ground? That's the big mystery here in Palmer. The town had a coal mine at one time, and residents say test holes were drilled by the EPA in the late 90s at the site of an old gas station. The EPA still has the test holes here. They haven't came back and checked them, but it's also not been cleared as safe. Some people smoke, others do not. Some have had genetic testing. It came back environmental, not genetic. Five of the people that I know of that have had the gene test done, it's came back environmental. I believe it's something maybe in this town. When it's a small town like this, and it's just this close to you, it's just like it's closing in on you. What can be done? Luann would like to see government testing. I'd like to see them come down here and test the soil and the water and the air and give us some answers. It's too late for me, but it's not too late for somebody else, and it needs to be caught. Clinging to hope, hope the cause of these cancers can be found. Who's gonna be the next one? You know, it's just like waiting for the bomb to drop or something. I hope and pray, and God willing, I won't get another cancer. Every day, you have to look in the mirror and see the scars, and it's hard. Fear and not knowing when and where cancer will strike again in Palmer. For the I-Team, Doug Wolf, WAND News. Interstate 88, a big rig crashes into stop traffic, killing a tollway worker and leaving an Illinois state trooper with burns over 15% of his body. The driver is charged with working 37 straight hours. Man, well, I, I, man, I can't drive no more tonight. Man, I'm, just, I'm just not safe to be driving right now. I-72 near Decatur. The driver of a semi falls asleep and crashes into an IDOT truck working a construction zone. No one seriously hurt. It's a matter of life and death. America's truckers, they keep our economy moving. Most of them are safe but many are forced to work long hours in order to make a living. I'm having a hard time staying awake going down the road right now. Abe Atala, he was too tired to drive while dispatchers pushed him to keep going. You should be able to stop, get a cup of coffee, walk around the truck, do something. I already did that earlier, man. I'm, I'm, I'm like minutes away from uh, falling asleep behind the wheel. Richland Community College trains truckers to get their CDL licenses. Students learn about hours of service, the time truckers can remain on the job and behind the wheel. John Smith is Richland's CDL coordinator. You get 
14 hours a day to work, you get 11 hours to drive, you have to take a mandatory 10 hour break. When Abe tried to stop, a dispatcher began threatening his wallet. You wonder where your paycheck went this week? You know, it came down to where, where it went tonight. Are we clear on that? Yes, we are clear. Okay. Dispatchers even told Abe how to wake up. Well, let's, do some, let's get out and do some jumping jacks in that cold air. Well, we have to get a cup of coffee and do something. Yeah, well, I, I, man, I can't drive no more tonight. I'm just, I'm just not safe to be driving right now. Coffee, rolling the window down, turning the radio up, those types of things just simply don't work. If you're fatigued and you're tired, get off the road. It's a matter of life and death. A fatal accident that made national headlines is being blamed on driver fatigue. It was a terrible accident. The car flipped. It's on his side. Comedian Jimmy Mac McNair killed, actor Tracy Morgan critically injured. The driver of a Walmart truck, Kevin Roper, charged with vehicular homicide and assault. Police claim Roper had been awake more than 24 hours at the time of the crash. Truck drivers do the records by hand, and there's a huge incentive to falsify the records. Trucks will eventually be required to go from paper to electronic logs. With electronic logs, it logs every minute of every day and keeps track. Congressman Rodney Davis says hours of service laws are good, but there needs to be some exceptions. Concrete trucks don't drive far, and the, the drivers have to be available to help with that pour of that concrete. Davis says agriculture should also have exemptions. Where we have a, a high driving season at harvest uh, that impacts the ability of farmers to get their product to the marketplace. Federal agencies are currently studying hours of service rules. I'm starting to micro sleep going down the road, man. I mean, I'm not oh, safe to be on the road. Get out, get some coffee. Abe, the trucker that was too tired to keep on driving, he eventually left his trucking firm. For the I Team, Doug Wolf, WAND News. Men in hard hats. My husband passed in December 14th from larynx and esophageal cancer. An environmental cleanup in a residential neighborhood. They said our pro property, it was um, lead and I believe it might have been arsenic. Contaminated <laughs> soil and the belief among some residents that it may be causing cancer, breast cancer in one woman. And I went through all of the treatment and stage three and lymph nodes at 39 years old. There are people that are younger than they should be getting very, very bad cancers that you wouldn't expect. The culprit? The 100-acre Hegler Superfund site. Closed in 1954, it is a toxic soup of waste, including arsenic and lead, blowing in the winds into the Hegler neighborhood. The contamination in this yard is, is horrible. In this area, it's horrible. I went out of the neighborhood and I can't sell my house now. A mountain of trouble. Slag, a waste product from zinc smelting, nearly 55 feet high over six acres. Slag used as fill in driveways, alleys, and along some roads in Hegler and Tilton. A $4 million cleanup, digging up two feet of dirt on 39 properties. For each individual property, we anticipate five to seven days from removed from excavation to, to um, putting down clean uh, sod on top. Dirt trucked out of the neighborhood, but not dumped in an EPA-approved landfill. When they dig up the dirt, it doesn't have to go far at all. In fact, they're bringing it right back to where it started, at the Hegler Zinc site. If it contaminated this area before, why is it not going to do that again? I mean, they've been testing this ground for ever since we've been living here, and there's never been anything done about it, so why now? EPA says the dirt will be moved again as part of a future cleanup on the zinc site. I want to know why they are only doing a certain area of my yard and not my entire yard. The cleanup is only on land EPA says is contaminated. Lots that are an island of green squeezed into a patchwork of properties where dirt is being removed. My mom owns a house on the main drag. She wanted it tested. They refused to test it. They said it's fine. For years, the residents of Hegler have been told there is no threat to public health. Yet residents map out homes with yellow stickers where people have been diagnosed with cancer, pink stickers for dogs with tumors. 
some cancers found in the nick of time. And thank goodness because they said it was aggressive and I would have six months. Multiple cancers all on the same block. So within a few houses of each other. Yeah, yeah, about 100 feet maybe. And a stricken parent. When she owned the house before she moved to Georgetown, breast cancer twice. A partial cleanup, full of fear, it is not enough. Some of your neighbors have had cancer as well. Oh yes, and passed away. We've lost them. Maybe we're fortunate or not fortunate, however you look at it, that they didn't just call this like Love Canal and close the whole thing down and ship us all out of here. Arsenic and old lead from a plant shuttered decades ago. For the I team and Hegler, Doug Wolf, WAND News. Your tires. The only part of your car making contact with the road. As tests show, even professionals who knew a tire failure was about to occur can lose control. I think I'm okay, I think I'm okay. Losing a tire at 70 miles an hour on an interstate creates its own danger. Some safety experts and car manufacturers believe you should never drive on tires that are more than six years old. Car makers even placing warnings about tire age in owner's manuals. Sean Kane of Safety Research and Strategies has testified before state lawmakers regarding tire safety legislation. Almost every single vehicle manufacturer, Ford, Chrysler, Mercedes, uh, BMW, Toyota, Nissan, Every one of these vehicle manufacturers has removed tires after six years, and that is based in science. The Rubber Manufacturers Association, the National Trade Association for Tire Makers, says it is not aware of reliable and accurate scientific or technical data that establishes a specific minimum or maximum service life for passenger and light truck tires. It's a rough road for consumers, figuring out exactly when tires should be replaced. The age of a tire doesn't always figure into it if that car is ran most of the time. Larry Barry runs Larry's Service Center in Taylorville. He's been in the tire business since 1978. Larry tells me as long as the tires are well maintained and the car does not sit for a long period of time, the tires should be fine. Let the car sit and that's when you run into problems. Once it sits for a, a two year period or something, that's when the damage will start your tires will start coming apart on you. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration studied tire aging and concluded regulation was not necessary for motor vehicle safety. While in December, the National Transportation Safety Board, NTSB, held a symposium looking into tire recall, safety, and aging. For now, tire safety falls on the car owner. How does a consumer determine the age of a tire? It's hidden on the tire sidewall as part of a DOT code. Every tire today comes with a DOT code and it tells you the plant it was made at, the week and month it was made at, as well as the year. If you look at your tires, you will see the initials DOT. Go to the last four digits, usually in a circle, for the manufacture date by week and year. In this case, 3514 means the tire was made in the 35th week of 2014. We visited a local vocational center where cars were on lifts quickly found tires that probably should not be on the road. Now this particular tire was manufactured in the 49th week of 2007, right at the end of 2007, making it a 70-year-old tire. Beyond its age, the biggest problem with this tire is a lack of tread and being poorly maintained. We see him we come in here with bald tires and we've had people get 100,000 miles out of a set of tires and, and less miles. It depends how they take care of their tires and how they take care of their automobile. The NTSB is expected to issue a report and recommendations on tire safety later this year. For the I-Team, Doug Wolf, WAND News. The College of DuPage, the second largest college in Illinois, the target of a federal criminal investigation. Just follow the law, it's all we ask, it's not hard. Our investigation uses information obtained through the Freedom of Information Act, receipts, contracts. 
internet searches, assistance from the Edgar County watchdogs, and a state Senate Democratic Caucus investigative report. They didn't really follow the spirit of a lot of laws in place regarding open meetings and other transparency issues. The community college, which gets $57 million in taxpayer money from the state, is under fire from the public for its lack of transparency and the way tax dollars are spent, especially at its high-dollar Waterleaf restaurant, which turned into a watering hole for top administrators. Lots of liquor, booze, wine, food, filet mignon. They've got French food there that I can't even pronounce. House accounts were charged $190,000 in recent years for expensive meals, parties, and alcohol. Some of the purchases disguised on the books as institutional supplies. Obviously, it shouldn't be categorized that way, and it is misleading. One receipt shows a gun was purchased using a College Foundation credit card as a gift to an outgoing Foundation member. The Central Illinois-based Edgar County Watchdogs has been keeping close tabs on the college's spending. If they would follow the law, not, not get compensated when they're not supposed to be, then, then, then you know, that's basically what we ask for. Kathy Hamilton, who recently became chairman of the college's board of trustees, has been challenging the lack of accountability at the College of DuPage, including providing the school's president, Robert Bruder, with a membership at a hunting club. For the record, I strongly oppose spending taxpayer dollars on Dr. Bruder's hunt club. Bruder worked out a deal with the previous board of trustees to retire in March of 2016 with a $763,000 severance package that was originally voted on without public notice and then voted on a second time with the same result. Hamilton, the only one opposing it, is working to have the deal eliminated. My goal, and I'm aggressively pursuing all avenues to claw back that egregious um, golden handshake. What makes it worse at the community college level is because that is based on a lot of on property taxes of residents. Bruder is currently on administrative leave. Hamilton is pushing to have the money losing water leaf used more as an educational facility and has moved to end the spending abuses at the eatery. We are not allowing people to use basically, you know, house accounts. I mean, the students are struggling as it is trying to go to school and you're going to put the, their alcohol on the backs of the taxpayer. I just don't think that's right. We have found that the alcohol policy has been violated time and time again, um, where the taxpayers are paying for a lot of alcohol that's being consumed on the premises. In addition to the federal investigation, the DuPage County State's Attorney is conducting his own investigation. For the I-Team, Doug Wolf, WAND News.